My name is Julie Pearson Little Thunder. Today is Thursday, April 14th, 2016, and I'm interviewing Kiowa Apache Gila River Pima artist Vanessa Bagiop Morgan at the Anadarko Public Library in Anadarko, Oklahoma. Uh, Jennings. Jennings. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thank you. We are um, the sponsored by the Oklahoma Oral History program at Oklahoma State University. Vanessa, you have historic connections to art. Your grandfather was Stephen Mopo. Yes. And you've been in this business a long time. You received a National Heritage Fellowship Award. You've won top awards at Santa Fe Indian Market and Red Earth for your beadwork, but you're especially known for your cradle boards, which are featured in various museum collections, and there's one here at the library. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. Where were you born and where did you grow up? Well, I was born in uh, uh, Tempe, Arizona. Uh, I'm a product of relocation. Mm -hmm. My mother was uh, uh, a nurse and she traded a part of her education for uh, working for Indian Health. And uh, I was born there in Arizona and when I was just a few days old, my grandmother came alone uh, on a train and came to Arizona and brought me home. So this is this is my only home. So your grandma raised you yes. over here in the yes. Anadarko area. Um, you told us a little bit about your mom. Anything you want to share about your dad? Well, my dad, you know? um, he was this big, strong, handsome man. He um, rodeoed, and uh, he got hurt <laughs> uh, after one of the rodeos, and my mother was his nurse, one of his nurses. And um, they met, and uh, uh, they got married, and I was born out there. And then, like I said, you know, I was just a few days old, and my uh, grandmother came and got me and brought me back to Oklahoma. It wasn't easy to take care of a little infant in those times no, either. No, not during that time because you had to, um, it isn't like the formula today, it, everything's ready made and easy to do, you know, because you had to mix it and uh, mix up the formula and the diapers, they didn't have, um, you know, the, the kind of disposable diapers that they have now. So, I mean, it was really, it was a lot. It, babies were hard work. <laughs> <laughs> and you were supposed to be a grandma's girl. I well, it, my mother was out there without really a support system. You know, she was working and um, so it was really hard trying to find a babysitter for me. And her hours were... Um, you know, she worked like uh, the 3 to midnight or the midnight to 8 o'clock shift, so it was really difficult getting a, getting someone to watch me. And so it was just easier for my grandmother to come and get me. And if, if, uh, if my grandmother had not um, came and brought me home, I really... I would have been disconnected. There wouldn't. I wouldn't have had a connection to my grandfather, uh, my grandmother. There, with her beadworking and with his painting, and their singing, their dancing, taking part. You know, I would have. I would have missed out on all of that. Right. Um, you sort of talked a little bit already now about your exposure to Kiowa language and culture growing up. Anything you want to add to that? Mm. It gave you a good strong base. Oh, it did. And I would like to think that um, I could pass that along to my, to my children and my grandchildren. Although my grandchildren is kind of a, kind of a toss up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have this wonderful little grandson but he comes walking through the house and, you know, one time he's blonde, another time he's got blue hair. Uh, 
you know, it's another time, like I think last night it was a, kind of like a rust, you know, it's just um, what he called artistic expression, Grandma. Right. You know, I would prefer that he expressed himself by braids and pierced ears, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different generation. <laughs> Um, so you explained that your grandma, of course, uh, was doing bead work. You were exposed to her bead art early. Any other family members that were like influences? No, it was just my my grandparents, and um, you know they they uh, with my grandfather, the what he was doing was recording a part of you know, Kaiwa culture that doesn't exist anymore. And at that time, there was a real, um, a really strong influence, um, you know, because of his, um, his uncles, uh, Silverhorn mm -hmm. and Old Tom. They were at the beginning of uh, ledger mm -hmm. art. And um, they, they were recording um, after the three days onto the reservation, and then my grandfather, um, he started uh, his artwork um, at the end of the, um, well, I guess it's the reservation period. Um, he um, recorded through World War One, World War Two, Korea, Vietnam. You know, until he mm -hmm. passed away in 1974. So, he he was a prolific. You know, and he was uh, when he he had this really strong um, work ethic. You know, he would get up um, right after breakfast. You know, he would start painting, and then he would take a break about nine o'clock, drink coffee. You know, then after his 15-minute break, well, then he'd start right back in and start working again. Then he would, you know, break for lunch, and then uh, he would work until after 10 o'clock at night. You know, but I mean, he was always, always. It was. It seemed like it was a. Everything was a creative process for him. It was really his calling. He really took it seriously. Yeah. When did uh, you make your first art of any kind? <laughs> um, he fixed. A, he found my missile. It was actually my mother's missile, and I uh, was drawing uh, flowers, and uh, I had this big, humongous uh, uh, print, you know, I was just, just now <laughs> learning how to write my name anyway, so, you know, he's, he has it and it's, uh, he's got it, uh, he's my organizer, he, put, <laughs> he organizes everything and it takes me no time to pull everything apart and <laughs> throw it out of order. You know, now this he, is your husband, oh, yes, Carl, that found your very, missile. <laughs> very patient, you know, and he'll go back in and reorganize. And, um, you know, um, I didn't know, um, like, when I first started beadworking, I was beading for my children. I wasn't, I've never thought mm -hmm. of myself as an artist. I've, I've always identified myself as a traditional woman. And um, I didn't know that you were supposed to um, have like a resume. I didn't know you were supposed to uh, um, keep copies of, uh, you know, your work, um, you know, but it, Carl is the one that organized all of that into a resume for me and collected all of my articles and, um, you know, he, he he takes care of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, so when did you start beading? Oh, I 
was just a little girl, you know, the, your, your, one of the first assignments um, is you pick grandma's uh, beads up, you know, nothing's ever wasted, so like if the, if the beads drop on the floor, you pick them up and, you know, you put them on a string, you know, they're, um, and then, uh, everything was, uh, nothing was wasted, you know, so you have like this one big jar and there's all of these beads, the all different sizes and colors and, um, you know, you, you just, you didn't waste it. And uh, that was, that was your first assignment. And, uh, you know, grandma can't, my grandmother couldn't get down and pick stuff up off the floor. You know, so that's that was that was your assignment. How about school? What was school like for you? Did you get any um, encouragement for any painting or drawing or no, no. In fact, <laughs> I got in trouble with my mother. Um, I used to wear. A, a, you know, I went to school with my hair braided. I wore uh, leggings, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I didn't realize, um, I didn't realize that, um, um, just being a, being a traditional woman, I mean, it was already, it was, the seed was already planted, and so, uh, you know, there here again. You know, Carl has these um, newspaper uh, photographs, and I'm a high school student, and you can see me with uh, my long braids and my leggings, and I'm uh, walking across the uh, out to the parking lot to get in. My grandfather came and picked me up. Uh, he drove me to school and picked me up, and. Um, um, you know, it was, um, it, it was, um, I was comfortable with who I was, you know, with my, uh, my dark skin, my, uh, my uh, painted scalp, my braids, and, um, um, when I, um, you know, I just, I had this, I had these wonderful, wonderful grandparents. My uh, my grandmother wore a cloth dress and a uh, concho belt and uh, braids, you know. Um, I had this visual idea of what was expected of a traditional woman. And uh, to me, the prettiest women were like on the agency days, you know, you uh, you could see these beautiful old ladies with their um, braided hair and their black string shawls. And um, there was this one old Comanche la uh, lady, her name was Mae Wakwe. I thought she was as pretty as my grandmother. And she had uh, leggings on and I, she was walking to the agency. And I remember how pretty I thought she was. And uh, just so confident and beautiful and uh, perfectly at ease with with being a Comanche woman and um, you know the same way with my grandmother you know that that identity that that confidence you know that was um, um, that was something that was really important to me these beautiful strong women that took a lot of courage too. I think at your high school graduation, because you were going against the oh, current. Yes. All the pressures were. It was. It was. You know, it's it's human nature for you to, uh, uh, for you to be afraid of someone who looks different, and I didn't realize, you know, that, um, just by being who I was. Um, you know, apparently I scared some people. <laughs> you know, and you know, but my but my own grandmother, you know, I mean, she had this 
she had this wonderful uh, confidence, and in the face of um, in the face of death, you know, she was dying from cancer, mm -hmm. and she never told anyone. You know, she um, she just faced it um, on her own terms. Mm -hmm. Um, what did you do after high school? I guess we should say quickly what school school system you were in. I, well, I, I never had I had never had uh, anything more than a high school education. Um, you know, my um, my children. Uh, I was wanting them to be dressed as if my grandmother were right there beside me. Even though I lost her in 1970, mm -hmm. um, I wanted my I wanted my babies. I wanted them. Um, I was too poor to go and buy beadwork, you know. So um, I was sitting down. I was making my own beadwork mm -hmm. for them, and that's how I got started. And then um, um, people started coming, and they. Who made this? Oh, you made this? Oh, can you make me a pair? Mm -hmm. And it, it just kind of, um, I just got pulled into it. <laughs> she wants to know what high school you went to. Oh, I went to school at Lawton High. In, Lawton High? In Lawton. Okay, because I was wondering if you were here in Anadarko. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, no, at Lawton High. Okay. I, it, 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 would, it was a... It was a very large uh, student body, and out of several hundred um, in our class, I think there were like uh, there were just like three or four of us that were Indian. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just these two little brown faces in this <laughs> sea of white. <laughs> it was it was uh, it was uh, you know you just gravitated toward each other. <laughs> right. Um, just, I, just a minute. This is Van Paul. Vanessa's mother worked in Tempe when she was born. Uh, that's when she went to live with her grandmother. After Tempe, I think she went to South Dakota to work as a nurse. And from there she came to Tallahena and oh. worked at the tuberculosis center there. Mm -hmm. And then she got a job at the Indian Hospital in Lawton. Okay. And that's when Vanessa moved to Lawton to be with her mother and father. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's so the, that's how you ended up circuitous, in that a circuitous route in the Lawton High School. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is after high school, but I read that you were a cultural advisor for the post office. <laughs> Can you tell us that story? <laughs> no, uh, the the postmaster. The uh, postmaster is my okay. friend, and. Uh, um, whenever they have uh, uh, groups of people who come in to look at the paintings, um, okay, the uh, he or one of the employees, like Ron, they'll call me and they'll say, you know, there's a, a group of people that are coming in here for. A, uh, do you think you could come and uh, talk about your grandfather's paintings? And so. Yes, I love. I <laughs> yes. love. I like people. I like visiting, and um, I love talking about his artwork. I like explaining, um, you know, what the what a wonderful, colorful, um, exciting man Steve Mopop was. You know, he was friendly. He, my grandmother would get mad at him because. Um, you know, he he never met a stranger. You know, he was always visiting, and um, uh, you know, and that was the. I think that's what made his um, artwork so exciting to me. You know, I just remember this wonderful storyteller. Um, you know, he <laughs> he was uh, he was so much fun to be around. He was so much fun to listen to his stories, and um, uh, the 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 kind of life that he and my grandmother had 
they were kind of like a, um, my grandmother ran the farm for him and uh, uh, my grandfather focused on his artwork mm -hmm. up at uh, the Jacobson house mm -hmm. and she didn't want him to be distracted by, you know, trying to uh, uh, take care of things at home. And that's what got him in trouble uh, because, you know, most people, they looked at it as if, um, as if he were being lazy. They didn't look at uh, artwork as a career option. Um, somehow it was, uh, it wasn't a job the way that most people, I mean, they, they, they cannot see how art, they can't see it as a viable um, occupation. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they just think it's frivolous, and it isn't, it isn't. Um, and for like my grandfather, you know, uh, he recorded um, uh, so much of our culture that no longer exists. Mm -hmm. If he and the other um, uh, members of the, uh, the Kiowa Five, if they had not recorded um, their, <laughs> we wouldn't have an Indian culture. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you realize they were the beginning of what has become a multi-billion dollar art market? Mm -hmm. You know, here are these six young people, um, you know, who, uh, when, when um, uh, they first, um, uh, were students at uh, St. Patrick's at the Indian Mission, the, the uh, uh, nuns um, and, and uh, Susie Peters, um, they were able to make um, an alliance, a friendship with Dr. Jacobson's wife, who was mm -hmm. French. And, um, they were able to secure um, a position. Dr. Jacobson gets all the credit, but it was actually um, Mrs. Jacobson who helped to secure the positions for um, uh, for uh, Jack Hokey, Steve mm -hmm. Mopope, um, uh, Spencer Asad, James Alchai, mm -hmm. and. Um, Miss Smokey, you know, all of that came about because of the, because of uh, Susie Peters and the nuns here at St. Patrick's Indian Mission. Mm -hmm. And they got a chance to travel a bit too, oh, yes. globally. Oh. There, uh, when uh, uh, my uh, grandfather's uh, uncles, uh, Old Tom and Silverhorn, and Jim Waldo, uh, Jim Waldo was um, a Carlisle uh, student. Uh, Tennyson Berry, who was Stephen Mopope's uh, father-in-law, uh, they sat on the business committee with Quanah Parker, and they they set the contracts for the uh, MKT, the Missouri, Kansas, Texas MKT Railroad. And so they used that whole, um, uh, that whole uh, uh, train route as a, an avenue for sales. Wow. And um, they would uh, set up um, like in Parsons, Kansas. Uh, they would go to uh, Chicago. Um, they would go. Uh, all the way down to Denton and on mm -hmm. down into uh, Waco and different places and um, they would uh, take uh, their dance clothes, mm -hmm. they would give dance presentations and then um, they would sell their artwork. So they had that in mind that they were yes. going to help the artists promote yes. mm -hmm. um, yeah. cultures. And it was, uh, it was uh, 
my grandfather really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, you know, they here they were doing things that were illegal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because Susie Peters, uh, she was supposed to be teaching them how to can and how to sew, mm -hmm. how to uh, become mainstream American mm -hmm. citizens, and you know, here, you know, she's setting up uh, uh, classes on how to, uh, you know, teach all of these different Indians, you know, um, beadwork techniques, and um, you know, it, you know, it was. Uh, there again, you know, that must have been ex an exciting time for her. Right. You know, she was uh, uh, she was able to uh, go with her protégés, and they would go to Gallup, um, they'd go to Santa Fe, they'd go, you know, she'd take her little charges and they you know, go all over and um, give dance presentations, and then they would sell um, their paintings. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so you start out kind of beating for your children. Yes, that's how and, I got my start. Right. And what was, did you enter any competitions at any point, or did it just start with commissions? You know, the, the, it, it got started with commissions, and then um, a friend of mine, um, uh, we would uh, chit-chat, and they said, you know, you there's this wonderful uh, art show here in Santa Fe. You should apply. Oh, no, 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 no. Anyway, but finally, you know, they talked me into it. And and when I first started going to Indian Market, it, uh, my booth fee was $75. So did you actually go to Indian Market before you did any other shows? Was that one of your first yes. shows? Wow, it was the, the toughest show to get in. Start, start at the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, start at the top. <laughs> well, they, they didn't give her a this booth. This is Carl. She had, she had to take her teepee and set it up on the plaza. Oh, okay. You were paying for just a place. Oh, my gosh. And I drag my, I drag my babies out there. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I mean, you haven't plaza. lived until you've... Uh, <laughs> You know, trucked a whole uh, uh, van load of uh, uh, teepee poles on yeah. those little narrow little Santa Fe streets. Yeah. I remember I got I got turned around and I got stuck at and the top of that. What's that art road that goes up to the hill? Oh, uh, what is the not name? Not Galisteo, of that? is it? No, yeah. we're Canyon all of road. The Canyon, Canyon Road. Canyon Road. I got stuck. I got stuck at the very end, and I remember oh, so I just busted there. out crying. I was tired, and uh, uh, my babies were hungry, and they were they were exhausted, and I got stuck up there, and I could not get turned around. And um, this nice, nice man, I have no idea who he was. Uh, he jumped in the he jumped in the truck and backed me up and turned me around and got me pointed down uh, so I was able to make it to the plaza. But I thought, oh my gosh. You know, now, hindsight, I thought, boy, that was a dumb idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great story. That's just a... Well, who would have thought, you know, we were, I was dragging my babies and we were setting up on the plaza and, and, um, uh, my goodness, I mean, there was, I mean, this is at the very beginning, and there there was not, they didn't have that many policemen mm -hmm. um, on the plaza, you know, at <laughs> night anyway, but I mean, we had, a, we had, a, we were fending off all kinds of people climbing under the, trying to climb under the, under the teepee, mm -hmm. through the, through the, you know, mm -hmm. come through the front door. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was crazy. I thought, man, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> now, what kinds of, um, did you have beaded medallions or moccasins? What kinds of things were you selling? Did you, had you, you know, already tried? I did, I was, this is the thing, uh, when my, uh, with my grandmother, 
you didn't do just one thing. Mm -hmm. um, traditional women, you did cradles, you did leggings, you did dresses, and um, you know that's what I carried out there to Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. I was making uh, baby moccasins. I was making uh, women's leggings. I was making dresses. Um, you know, I uh, I had it was a um, you know, now today, people, they specialize, mm -hmm. you know, they have like, you go to somebody um, when they, you know, they just make medallions, mm -hmm. somebody else just does uh, keychains, somebody else does uh, just uh, belt buckles, uh, I mean, the, it's, it's, it's um, very specialized. And, it wasn't that way in our home. Mm -hmm. You know, you had to learn how to do everything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that meant, uh, that meant learning how to tan hides. Mm -hmm. That meant, um, uh, I mean, you, you, you had to, you, a good woman was able to do everything, you know, and, it isn't like it is now where it's mm -hmm. specialized. Do you remember when you entered your first competition at Santa Fe? Uh, out there at Santa Fe. <laughs> uh -huh. Do you remember that approximately was, what year or and what oh when you entered? Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, Gabe was probably about 10 years old. Um, 1981. Around 1981. Yeah. Yeah. Did you enter a dress or what did you enter? I entered a, I entered a, I had a, a painted a buffalo robe. Mm -hmm. I did a, a buckskin dress, okay. and I did a pair of uh, green leggings. Um, you know, uh -huh. traditional old style mm -hmm. work. You know, where, you know, which is something I I still love doing. I I don't like. I do not like. Uh, um, the mirrors and the mm -hmm. uh, stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I prefer I prefer old style work. And so, what what um, category did you win in? With what with what piece? Did well, um, maybe you won a couple. Yes, I. Uh, uh, I think about 2014, I did a. a uh, beaded uh, face, um, a horse mask, yes, and a, a beaded martingale. Mm -hmm. um, I did a, I did a, a cradle board one year, um, and our little grandson was little. <laughs> we went, and our little grandson, you know. Old people, they really appreciate good manners. And so this little boy, um, I had this cradle and I had, uh, um, I had made it out of uh, these, these larger beads. And um, I think I called it Res Baby, the name of the cradle. <laughs> and yellow uh, and white stripe on one side uh -huh. and mm. green and white stripes on the other side. And our little grandson, um, went and started down the line. Oh, no, we saw, we saw Emil at the end of the line. So we told Kay to go shake hands with Emil, her mini horses. So he went and started shaking hands with everybody in the line. <laughs> going by the line. Until he finally got to Emil. <laughs> and I know Emil was wondering, who is this little Indian boy? <laughs> Well, I I think um, it was your horse mask, if I remember. You you told me a kind of cute story about it that sold for a good price, mm -hmm. and um, as the you know as the Indian grapevine was going, then it, it the price just kept getting bigger and bigger from booth to booth. Oh, you know, Vanessa sold her horse mask. <laughs> <laughs> but um, can you can you remind us? Because I can't remember if you made it for your daughter-in-law or for our daughter-in-law. What that story? 
and uh, uh, you know I sold it and my children when my children were small I used to tell them if mama has a chance to sell it I'll sell it mm -hmm. I will make you something else mm -hmm. to replace it and since then we've made that same that daughter-in-law too <laughs> <laughs> She and got the second oh, one. Oh, yes. Is that right? And, and, uh, and the third one. And, and our, our, our son wanted to use uh, the, he wanted to use the uh, horse mask. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, no, no. She said, uh, Dad made it for me. I don't, I don't, I don't think I should. <laughs> I don't think I should loan it. <laughs> he said, Those are my folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, how about your beaded cradle boards? I'm not sure how many people were actually doing those when you started. And you did? Did you start out with bigger ones, or did you start out with miniature? No, I started out with uh, uh, big ones. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. And see, there again. Um, you, I've always joked, uh, you know, we're like two little old dinosaurs. You know, those we're the ones you're going to come look for at Indian Market. There mm -hmm. isn't another place mm -hmm. for me to sell my work. I don't, I don't belong anywhere else. It, all of the other art shows are emulating Indian Market, but. They don't have the support. They don't have the. They don't have the. The quality of uh, volunteers. They mm -hmm. don't have the. Customers. The customers, mm -hmm. you know, who have, who have the money, mm -hmm. to be able to. Uh, uh, I mean, they look at truly. They look at, at, um, this work as an investment. Mm -hmm. You know, it isn't. Um, um, it isn't just a, a quick mm -hmm. thrown together something, you know, and then um, it's going to be worn out or it's going to end up in a pawn shop, you know. Right. No, it, it, it is, it is um, a thing of, an, it is, it is substance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, how did you and Carl meet? <laughs> we were on we were on the opposite side of the dance arena for all and our lives. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about the fellowship that you got from the? Um, it was ultimately from the National Endowment for the Arts, I guess. They give this heritage, National Heritage Fellowship. Yes, you know, it, um, the. Uh, First of all, tell her about um, the uh, woman from OU that came to the Apaches and was looking for you. Emma That's Hansen. a good place to start that. Emma Hansen. She was, uh, uh, they were uh, uh, working on this uh, Plains Apache exhibit. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, my grandpa, Frankie Redbone, um, sent her to my house. Mm -hmm. And he told her, he said, now you tell her that um, uh, I sent you. In other words, I couldn't say no. Right. <laughs> anyway, but they had, um, but they asked, that, that was the, that was my very first, um, I guess, public commission. They, um, I did a little dress and a little um, leggings, and mm -hmm. I made them for my daughter. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I remember uh, I was talking with uh, uh, Bobby J, and I remember I told him, I said, you know what, Bobby, my work is so much better now. I said, why don't you let me uh, trade you, let me let me give you one of my dresses. You give me that dress back. <laughs> I don't want anybody to see how beautiful <laughs> it looks. And he said, no. He said, you know, he said, uh, he said, someday, he said, you're gonna, he said, you might be famous. He said, and I want to tell everybody 
we have her very first commission piece in our in our um, in our museum. And what what museum did it go that's to? That's at the that's at the okay. the Apache. Okay. Tribal Museum here. Okay. Wow. The Apache Tribe of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. The Kiowa Apache. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They used to be called the Kiowa Apache, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, they they just call themselves the Apache Tribe of Oklahoma now. Right. And see, they were um, um, they've been affiliated with the Kiowas since um, the Medicine Lodge Treaty, mm -hmm. and you know they've always been known as the Kiowa Apaches, mm -hmm. but they're not like the they're not like the Mescalero mm -hmm, or the mm -hmm. uh, San Carlos. They're a Plains Apache. Mm -hmm. So, so you got that um, commission for a, for a museum, and then um, this fellowship. How did you find out about the, that? <laughs> um, I found out about it. Uh, through the State Arts Council, and um, uh, the the coordinator said uh, this kind of um, the 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 people who are selected, he said generally they're elders. He said they're not young people, mm -hmm. and so I was floored <laughs> when I got it. And, and how old were you, approximately? I, hey. I was 89. Yeah. I was born in 52, so mm -hmm. how old was yeah. that? Yeah, and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Doc Tate, we were up at Red Earth, and uh, he said, I heard you're a, he said, I heard you're a, a National Heritage Fellow. I said, yes. He said, oh. He said, uh, <laughs> Uh, he said, I, see, we were the only two living fellows for years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, Bruce Caesar, mm -hmm. and then uh, after him, um, Fred Soodle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were, um, we were the only fellows for quite some time. Oklahoma fellows? Yeah. Oh. Then and uh, the on the other side. Uh, George Ann Robinson, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the basket maker or pottery maker. No, no, that was somebody from Santa Fe. Uh -huh. Now, did the um, fellowship did it allow you to do research? Was there a cash award? Was it just yes. a okay? You can do so. It kind of buys that. you some time to work yes. on. But you don't necessarily have to work on a major piece, or is that part of the no, fellowship? No, you can do. Um, what I was doing was research. Mm -hmm. I was uh, going to the. Um, well, it was the um, Museum of Natural History, and they they had it. They called it the attic. Scary, scary, scary. Oh my gosh! Was uh, it DC or New York? In DC. DC. No, okay. It was in DC, and it was oh. the storage was up. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a, uh, and they did. You could go to a, 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 oh gosh, what is the name of that? It's um, it's on the border of. Um, uh, Spanish Harlem and Black Harlem. Anyway, mm -hmm. in the New Hay York, mm -hmm. yes, oh, the, Hay. Okay. Um, the Hay Foundation. Yes, and uh, I had, I had no idea. I'm, I am a true country mouse. <laughs> oh my gosh, I I could not believe the. You know, man, these people must eat their young. You know, to live in New York mm -hmm. and um, and to live in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. and you know, but um, I have to admit though the um, going into the going into the the attic uh, 
it isn't like it is now. I mean, they, they had stuff stacked, stacked, mm -hmm. stacked one on top of the other. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, magnificent Kiowa cradle boards. Mm -hmm. The rawhide, uh, the covers were being crushed, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it, that won't happen now. Everything mm -hmm. is, um, you know, just, 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 you know, state of the art. Mm -hmm. Care. Were there any surprises for you in terms of the, the research, what you did discover? Yes. Um, it was crazy, the, the um, you know, the, uh, I was looking at, um, I, I didn't know what I was looking at. It was mm -hmm. a horse mask, but it was, uh, it had like a wooden, wooden slats. Huh. Um, and then it had a, a like a like buffalo horn, and you know I have I have never I have never um, I've never seen that again. Mm -hmm. You know, but I mean it was so unusual. And then um, uh, the I knew. Um, I saw a cradle, a Kiowa cradle board, and um, it was on brain tan hide, and I remember there were um, figures, there were motifs that were uh, beaded on this cover, but it wasn't a fully beaded, it was just like um, these motifs and then these figures. It was really unusual, and then it wasn't until, I guess it must have been about um, seven years ago, mm -hmm. um, we started uh, going through his, you know, he had organized everything, and I knew I saw that, I knew I saw that cradle, and uh, he had it, mm. and there it was, you know. Um, he puts everything into like he organizes everything into like folders. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this is a uh, maybe um, these are um, uh, like um, uh, like figures. Uh, maybe this has a uh, some kind of a floral um, beaded um, motif. Um, you know, everything is everything is organized and um, and labeled, and mm -hmm. um, you know, it's identified the collection. That's a know. great resource, research resource. Then you have that. Yeah. Really hey. Tell us what the guard told you at the attic. Oh. <laughs> 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 he said. Aren't you afraid uh, of what? He said. He said I don't like going back there. Mm. Why? He said. He said because I can hear people. Mm. And uh, he said uh, somebody called him by name. <gasps> anyway, and he said, "Where are you?" And they said, "Over here." He said, "Where?" <laughs> he said, "Over here." And he said he. He said, you mean over here? And somebody went and just slapped him. Oh, wow. There was nobody there. It was a ghost. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but he said, uh, man, he said, I don't, he said, I don't like that. He said, there, he said, he said, those people, he said, there, he said, they're, he said, they scare me. <laughs> oh, well, most of them are probably my relative. <laughs> But you know, I never go. Um, I never go into a into the collection without paint. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean that is. I, I, uh, no, 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 no. I don't want anything mm -hmm. to follow me home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I was I was really surprised. You know, I had first off, you know. 
um, you know, I, I was I was telling this man, I said, you know, you're not supposed to follow. You're not supposed to follow. When <laughs> common sense tells you that there isn't a flesh and blood human being back there, come here. <laughs> yeah. You're not supposed to go and say, where are you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, you got a commission also from the International Folk Museum, I think, in Santa Fe. Yes. Could you talk about that piece? That was a, uh, oh my goodness, that was a, that was a long time ago also. And uh, they, uh, they, uh, my son Seth, uh, we were both there and uh, uh, he was giving cultural demonstrations. And uh, uh, um, when I went out there, I met this lady. And um, you know, sometimes when you meet someone, they never tell you how important they are. <laughs> you know, it just never, just <laughs> never, they, they have that much confidence that they don't brag on themselves, you know. and. Um, you know, they invited me to. They invited me to come, and um, I could do research and uh, help them to identify um, uh, the items that I thought were Kiowa, mm -hmm. and um, explain, you know, how the, uh, you know, what went into the piece, um, and then uh, I made a. I made a little uh, a little girl's dress, and then uh, about that, I was making a. Um, I was making a little boy's clothes too about that mm -hmm. same time. Anyway, and it must have, I must have had nephews or nieces or, you know, somebody that I was doing stuff and. Um, uh, it just it just fit neatly into this uh, into this um, um, demonstration. That's great. Who was it that talked talk to you and didn't tell you who it was? Oh, she's retired now. Uh, she was the um, she was at the uh, museum out there at the. Um, no. And if you think of it, we can put it in brackets okay. later inside the interview. Um, you know, I'm you doing good to remember my name. <laughs> you mentioned um, how important it was, you know, as a traditional woman to be able to do a range, whole range of things. But I'm just wondering, what is your favorite thing to work on, to be? Cradles. Cradles. And I like doing, I like doing, uh, I like doing little girl um, leggings and moccasins, mm -hmm. you know. In fact, um, I've got a, I've got a, a pair of little girls' uh, leggings cut out this um, this morning, and uh, two pairs of little girl moccasins. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but um, we have uh, we have uh, um, this cute little. Uh, cute little granddaughters. And then a friend of ours, um, uh, this Osage friend, uh, she has a little granddaughter. And the little girls, um, uh, both of our granddaughters are about the same age, same mm -hmm. size, you know. So it, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun um, uh, working on things for them. Yeah. Going back to your cradle boards, can you talk a little bit, and you've had several featured in books on Kiowa cradle boards or Southern Plains cradle boards. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of cradle boards for the Kiowa people? Well, the, um, you know, a man, our world is, uh, it's very much, um, uh, male dominated I mean it's a warrior mm -hmm. a warrior society 
and a man can stand up and he can talk about his um, his war deeds but on that same level that same um, uh, kind of respect is given to a woman who can uh, talk about uh, cradle boards you know because um, um, a cradle board could be given as a gift and it uh, solidifies um, uh, you know like uh, family mm -hmm. friendship um, it could um, it could be um, like um, at our uh, black legs warrior uh, uh, ceremonial mm -hmm. um, this is my warrior artist, and um, in uh, in order to honor him, you know, I've given away uh, cradle boards. Um, you know, and it is because he never asked me for anything, you know, but he always does for me, mm -hmm. and you know, so on that on that that same um, level of respect. You know, uh, I can turn around and I can give a cradle board, and, uh, and not only uh, the family that I'm giving it to, um, it shows how much respect I have for you, but also um, that cradle board, it's uh, to honor mm -hmm. um, uh, this wonderful man. Mm -hmm. Have you um, done any judging of beadwork? No. <laughs> no, I haven't. And I don't know that I would be any good at judging. <laughs> Nonetheless, you've been in it long enough to... Um, there have been some changes. It seems like it's commanding more of a price that reflects how much time you put into things, you know, a little bit closer than it used to be. Um, what other changes have you noticed in, in beadwork circles? Well, I know that I'm getting slower. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it just, it seems like, um, uh, it seems like we have to, uh, we have to think, you know, more about how to best uh, use our time. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is, uh, um, um, I have congestive heart failure. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, it seems like I just have just some big health issues now and it's really difficult to do things it's difficult to sit. Um, it's difficult to uh, uh, it just seems like um, you, you need to plan more. you need to think mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. about the best the best use of your mm -hmm. time, your talent. Um, and then, you have to be brave enough to say, you know what, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then... Um, are you, um, do you, uh, or a fam do you have family members that help with um, hide tanning, or are you actually buying your hide tanning? No, no, I... He set me up with uh, an account. Uh, I had... I used such big amounts mm -hmm that um, unless it's something that, you know, we're going to keep for ourselves, um, it, it's, it's better to go ahead and um, purchase it. Mm -hmm. You know, because like a cradle board, you can't get, you can't get paid for the amount of uh, time that you have. Mm -hmm. Right. We bought, we paid for 12 hides, mm -hmm. brain tan hides, 
couple of years ago. We got six of them and we haven't cheated. seen the oh. rest of them. So I doubt mm -hmm. we ever will. Mm -hmm. This guy's from Montana or somewhere and I, mm -hmm. I didn't know him. But, you know, I'm, you know, yeah, you can't be. Trust the first. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Can I say something about the changes in me work? Sure. This is Carl again. Um, people don't take the time that it takes to do things well anymore. The, the, the people that are beading moccasins bead with bigger beads because mm -hmm. it you know cover more space and fewer designs and and uh, the quality is not there that it was 40, 50, 60 years ago, and that's. That's hard to take mm -hmm. because you know the difference if you were beaten 40, 50, 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to judge those things because you don't want to, you don't want to uh, stifle somebody's creativity. But they just don't know what that, that uh, quality should look like. So it's, it's, it's difficult to see that. Very few bead workers take the time that it takes to do a quality thing. There's a few, there are a few that mm -hmm. really know how to do that. Mm -hmm. But they're getting fewer and far between. And there's one family from up north and all of those girls have learned to bead from their grandma and their mama. And mm -hmm. She learned from her folks, and they do excellent work. But I don't see anybody down here, not one mm -hmm. person that really does the work. That and the family take. that he's, he's speaking of is Joyce Groenbender. Groenbender, that's what I was thinking, yeah. Um, well, let's talk about your, your process and your techniques a little bit. You. Um, have used a lot of small beads uh, and such on medallions and some of your miniature cradle boards. Um, do you use antique beads very much, or were you ever into that? No, we have some. Mm -hmm. that there's, there's a few on this little curve. Okay. There are, we still have some of my grandmother's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, but those are things that you know, you want to hang on to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and there's never enough to do a big project. Mm -hmm. There's just small elements on this cradle that have some in it. Mm -hmm. Have your, um, has your use of color or your designs changed at all over the years? I think it has. I like um, <laughs> when, uh, oh gosh, don't even look at my, at my stuff from long ago. <laughs> it's just, it's just awful. <laughs> I think artists are always hard on themselves that no, way. No, 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 uh, no. I, we went to, uh, uh, we went to Altus. And um, uh, we were looking at some uh, um, some old photographs, and we were, you know, uh, doing some things. And uh, oh my gosh, there was one of my <laughs> one of my early dresses, and my early uh, early pair of leggings. Oh gosh, I just wanted to just crawl under a rock and hide. You know, it was just. Uh, Oh, and the, the curator says, we have a Kiowa dress, but it was named by somebody, I think her name was Vanessa, uh, <laughs> but her last name was Morgan, so it's probably not the same lady. <laughs> I said, oh yes, it is. <laughs> uh, um, what about the relationship between, like, beauty and usability. Is that important to you, that things that you make? Yes. 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 Um, 
in in Kiowa culture, you know, there is um, um, there's a very uh, uh, structured um, class system. You know, so the 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 more um, uh, highly decorated the the you can tell um, by looking at the person how they're dressed, where they fit in uh, within the within the Kiowa society. Now, see, that's such an old idea too. That that has just pretty much gone by the wayside, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, uh, now you see a, a you just see things that are happening now that shouldn't be happening, but it's just because of the the breakdown in the culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that the word for. Uh, for a cradle board, it illustrates that, and and kind of in a sideways way. But the word is pan tool, and it pan is a, a useful tool, mm. something that's used. And tool means it's tied up. Mm. And the inference is that this is a useful tool, but it doesn't become a useful tool until something is tied up in it. Mm -hmm. And the, the beadwork on it is obvious, but it's not mentioned. Thank you. That's, that's a good insight to have. When, um, what's your creative process, Vanessa, from the time that you like get an idea? An idea for a particular thing you want to make? I, d I don't. <laughs> oh, first thing she does is we talk about it. Mm. What, okay. what do you think about this idea? What do you think about putting this on it? And that's, what about this instead? Or I saw something like that. And that takes a couple months. And then she starts to work on it. And all the time we're talking about, you know, this mm -hmm. color or that mm -hmm. color, or, you know, <laughs> let's do it this way. Or, you know, I saw something fun in a museum and, you know, uh -huh. let's try to do something like that. Do you do any preparatory sketching of your designs? Do you ever sketch out your designs? No. Okay. They no. We, yeah, it's just a... Uh, it seems like um, each of them, they have, a, they have a life force of their own. Mm -hmm. So you could, I'm sure you could sketch it out, but in the end, you know, it's going to decide how it wants to live. Mm -hmm. Um, what is your work? What is your work routine? I go from lazy <laughs> <laughs> to uh, hurry up. <laughs> you, if you're hungry, you go fix you a bologna sandwich, uh, but don't bother me. <laughs> Do you work on several things simultaneously? Do you switch off? I've projects? got yes, I've got. Mm -hmm. I've got. Um, uh, we were joking about um, the stuff in our house. We've got lots of uh, uh, moccasins that are just one side. <laughs> you know, I said that this is going to be fun when I pass away. Our girl's going to be looking at them. What was she doing with this? <laughs> she started outlining this cradle a couple of years ago. And, you know, then, then it got changed. Some of that beadwork came off and the <laughs> chain got changed. And then, you know, we sat down and about two months ago she started working on it and finished it. Mm. But they, they, yeah, sometimes things, they need to sit. You mm -hmm. need to let them sit and think about it. Um, well, looking back on your career so far, what's been one of the high points? Looking back on your time in the Native art markets. Just how um, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I think that that comes about, 
you know, with um, confidence. Mm -hmm. The six foot five black transvestite in a Golda May miniskirt, so telling her her shoes are pretty. It was pretty fun. Oh wow, that was in Santa Fe, huh? No, it was in New York. That was in New York. Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this. You were wearing your moccasins. Yes, they. He put his hand on my head and told me, "Turn around, darling. Let me look at you." And I felt oh. like an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, you, and he's you, gotten the biggest kick out of that. <laughs> oh, and the, the bald-headed man with the tattoos and the, the gold toothpick in his nose at, at the uh, Budweiser uh, booth next to her, uh, next to her booth. What, oh what show was that? That was a, uh, the, the, the Indian Summer Festival the Indian Summer up Festival. in Milwaukee. Oh, okay. And, uh, I told him... You're not going to believe this. I said, it's a toss-up between these men and women who has the tightest, most sprayed-on black leather pants and who has the highest heels, the men or the women. And uh, he was, um, I told him, I said, you know how you can tell somebody wants to talk to you? Uh, I said, and this man, I couldn't. Keep following her around. I, I couldn't. I couldn't look at him. I said he had a. He had his. He was all tattooed up, and then he had this, this, this thing stuck through here. And I was telling Carl, man, I am really and truly too much of a country mouse to be up here. <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm not going to ever come back up here anymore. <laughs> she said, I, I said, what did he tell you? He says, she said, I don't know. I says, all I could see was that silver toothpick wiggling around in his nose. I didn't hear a word he said. <laughs> you do run across some characters. I know. <laughs> now you did the Red Earth show for quite a while, right? Or just for a short period, I can't remember. Yes. Um, I was even the um, honored one. Okay. What, and, what year was that? Oh, gosh. Well, Cade was born, so it was 90. Yeah, Cade was little. He was mad because Connie uh, Yellowman Yellow Man. Was, the, was the director. Mm -hmm. and, um, it was 2004, 5 or Cade 6. Was, mm -hmm. Cade was mad because... He didn't want to dance, and then he got he got out there, and uh, they were trying to steer him off. He was dancing in front of us in that big line, uh -huh. you know, and he wasn't dressed. Uh -huh. But so, that's okay because he's right, our grandson. Right. But he's dancing, you know, six or eight or ten feet in front of us, and the the arena directors were trying to get uh, this little kid off the dance ground, and he didn't know who he was. Not knowing he was oh, family. And maybe. then when when he found out they were giving all the tiny tots five dollars, then he wanted to dance, and it was over with. <laughs> um, that's that's really a nice that's a nice uh, honor too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about one of, um, it's been one of the low points of your career so far. The low point? Mm -hmm. You've been taking I've got a quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> I've got quite a few, mm -hmm. which all it does is it makes you appreciate, you mm -hmm. know, the, the nice things, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then that makes you uh, that makes you uh, uh, pretty philosophical, mm. and you say, you know what? I'm glad you don't know everything bad about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of your children. Well, they know how to do a lot of these things. They've always been around it. Are any of them kind of following an art path, or no? Okay, no. They they like wearing it, especially our girl. Uh -huh. She loves wearing it. 
<laughs> you know, but um, I think that if she, uh, you know, Summer, if she would uh, uh, just sit down and dedicate herself, you know, I think that, um, I think she could go a long way. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's, 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 it's more, it's more fun to frolic, you know, <laughs> than to uh, really um, have to work hard. Tell her about Summer going to the Smithsonian last year. Oh my gosh, she went, she went last year. They, uh, the Kiowa they, tribe. They, the Kiowa tribe mm -hmm. took her and uh, several um, young Kiowas and they were going up there to look at the, um, to look at the old uh, kind of things, the mm -hmm. collections. And um, um, lo and behold, who, I wouldn't, I, I never thought the girl paid attention, you know, and here they, she was making some pretty astute observations and, and explaining, you know, well, this is why, you know, uh, I've seen my mom do this, and I've seen them do this, and uh, you can tell, and <laughs> oh man, I'm proud of her. I'm proud <laughs> of to her. answer your question, I think once we're gone, all that will come up and she'll be able to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think. Well, sometimes, you know, that, that that's something you should never, you should never... Uh, you know, just you shouldn't just be um, judgmental. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes it, you just have to be pragmatic and realize that maybe it will take your death mm -hmm. for them to realize, you know, how important this is. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to a young? Um, native person who wants to do the art market, who wants to bead full time? Well, I would say that um, um, to don't, don't wait for someone else to tell you that you can do it. You have to be able to tell yourself, you know, I can do this. You know that, that the 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 thing that the thing that you should never get tired of though is you should never get tired of talking. Mm -hmm. You know that's a big part of it. Yes, that's a big part of it. And you should never get so discouraged that. Um, Nobody can stop you but you. You know, when you say, I can't do this, you know, I promise you, you won't be able to. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to add or talk about before we take a look at your cradle boards? And no, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tired. Okay. All right, we're going to pause and um, just quickly take a look at those. All right, Vanessa, can you tell us a little bit about your beaded cradle board? Just anything? Well, this is a, a doll cradle. Um, at one time, um, a, a little girl, uh, her full-size cradle had a small doll cradle that went along with it. And um, of course, uh, collectors found out how valuable they were, mm. and uh, so you don't see the you don't see many of the dolls with the full size boards mm -hmm. it's because the, it it's more um, um, you can make more money by separating them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And this was the one that you worked on and then you 
It, mm-hmm. it was around the studio for a while. Okay, and how about your hide cradle board here? It's done out of um, a handmade uh, rawhide, mm-hmm. and then this it's is a pretty. brain tan uh, 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 skin right. that's cut up into the strings, and then it has um, sinew mm. that, mm-hmm. that makes the lacing at the bottom. Yeah. Not easy to work with. That's beautiful, too. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you.